And Steve's like, oh, have you heard this dead mouse dude? And Tom's like, no, right? And he would play him some of my weird not my dance music. He had these contest winners uh, like kind of shuffled into the room and they're losing their minds. I'm just kind of just like witnessing it at this point. I'm not like shivering in a corner. I'm just like, this is so bizarre, man. He's sitting beside me. He stands up and sort of watches. He takes the empty bottle, stands up and just whips it across the room, hits the wall. It explodes. And I was like, So Steve went over to Tommy's to do some op stuff, either upgrade a PT system or troubleshoot some bullshit with Scott and Chris and all that stuff. And Steve, uh, it, it's not, he's not there and uh, Tommy's not an asshole. So it's like anyone that kind of goes into his space or his home, like you, you, you're bro, dude. You know, like it's not, you know, just get to work. Don't look at me, just do what you need to do. No, and they got chummy, right? So they got talking music and then Steve's like, oh, have you heard this dead mouse dude? And Tom's like, no, right? And he would play him some of my weird shit, not my dance music. He would play him the, the stuff I did, like, you know, the B-roll shit, you know, mm -hmm. that nobody really hears that I just kind of do for fun and I give it out to friends and stuff like that. And and then for whatever reason, Tommy emails me. He's like, yo, your boy dude uh, gave me some of your shit. It's fucking whack and I love it. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, Thanks. I, that's neat. You know, if you want more, I can send you more. I don't know what you would do with it, but whatever. Cool. Like, I, I just didn't see the connection. You know what I mean? But I was like, I was, it was still pretty cool. Like, he sends me this email and I was like, yeah, your boy, Steve. No, no, no. I'm like, rad. Cool. So, like, every month or so when I finished something cool, I'd send it off to him and get some feedback. And then the feedback would turn into like, like just dumb jokes or like just hey, stupid chain emails of some meme. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, okay, cool. And then I get another email from him, and I'm living in the, um, I couldn't go to the States. I was banned. Still. Henceforth, yeah. Um, so I'm in uh, Niagara Falls, back at my mom's house, debating on moving to Toronto or not. And I get this email from Tommy. He's like, yo, I'm playing in Hamilton. You want to come? And I'm like, yeah, threaten me with a good fucking time. Of course I'll come. <laughs> um <laughs> So uh, Hamilton's like, you know, 30 minute drive from Niagara Falls. So it's just like our local thing. He's doing some Motley Crue shit. So um, he's like, uh, yeah, you know, here's here's Tony's number, email, just go and send him. He'll put you on the will call and whatever and get you whatever. So I'm thinking, I'm like, cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, fuck it. I'll go. And I've never been to a concert. I'll go happily sit in GA or whatever ticket you fucking got me and I'll fucking chill. So I get there and I message the Tony guy on my fucking Fido. <laughs> and uh, he's like, uh, oh yeah, come to gate, da 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 da. And I'm like, fucking Christ. So I'm like trying to like navigate my way around this whole like idea of being at a venue, which I've never been. And, uh, and then anyway, this fucking BT bleach tip douchebag looking dude fucking finds me and he's like hey you joel right and i was like yeah he was like oh tony i'm like oh hey man nice to meet you he's like, yeah come on come on so he walks me in through the loading bay and just takes me into like one of the locker rooms and it's like just draped with like fucking hippie sheets and it just reeks of nog champa that's why i discovered that shit by the way um the incense right and fucking tommy's just sitting there and i was like oh hey He's like, oh, dude, do, do, do. And he's like the nicest guy. Like he, he's that kind of dude that'll like, you know, like if a friend brings a friend to like a dinner event because he's a good friend of theirs, like he makes everybody feel yeah. welcome. You know what I mean? He yeah. doesn't just kind of have you around as a prop. You know what I mean? He'll be like, you, you know what I mean? He's yeah. a really, really cool dude. I'm really envious of that because I can't be like that. Like as on as he is when it comes to social awareness. Yeah. You know, I, even though he's not aware he's doing that, he's just he's just got some weird thing with his brain, I guess. I don't know. But he's a really, really cool dude. And I was like, oh, hey, hey, nice to meet you, man. He's like, yeah, rad, dude, let's fucking, you want a beer? No, no, no. I was like, yeah, cool. So I was like sitting around drinking. And the funny thing was is that my first interaction with the guy really was, so he's like, um, it was a, a locker room, right? But they just draped over the, the the pissers, basically, right, with some bullshit, just to make it look a little yeah. more homely or whatever. And he's got he's got this sound system that has got Figgy pushed in there for him, so that he can like you know kind of party before the show, which I thought was absurd. And um, 
<laughs> he's he had these contest winners uh, like kind of shuffled into the room and they're losing their fucking minds. I'm just kind of just like witnessing it at this point. I'm not like shivering in a corner. I'm just like, this is so bizarre, man. Like, this, what am I doing here? How did this happen? You know, and um, while I'm in that thought, this is, you know, a, a younger girl came in. Like, I mean, like. 15, 14 maybe, and her, I would assume, mother, right? I'd like kind of come in. So I'm like, oh, maybe she won a contest thing and she had to come with her mom because fucking, you know, that's whatever. So they're all sitting around and the mom is just kind of like, like kind of like me. We're just like, what the fuck is going on in here? You know what I mean? And Tommy's just like partying. He's like, and um, so I'm sitting down and there's this like little table here. I'll never fucking forget this. And uh, he just kept putting beers in front of me, like Corona. So I'm like drinking a beer. And he, he, he's sitting beside me. He stands up and says, watch this. He takes the empty bottle, stands up, and just whips it across the fucking room, hits the wall. It fucking explodes. And I was like, like oh, my God, that's funny. But why? Why, why would you do that? You know? And the, and the 14-year-old girl is just like. Like laughing her ass off. The mom's terrified. Glass is flying fucking everywhere. And he, and he starts handing me it. He's like, do it, do it, do it. And I was like, bro, like, come on, man. That was like literally my very first rock and roll moment. And, and then he's like, just, just fucking whip it, man. And so we're like whipping these empty Corona bottles down the fucking hall. I'm thinking like, see, like anyone else, me especially, like in any other circumstance, I'd get arrested for this shit. You know yep. what I mean? I, or, or at the very least yelled at, you know, or something like that. But I was like... Like, why do you, why is this fun? Hey, I mean, it felt great to do it, but I was like, <laughs> this is so juvenile. This is so stupid. Like, I thought you were like an adult, you know, and, and I think legally you are, but why are we acting like children? I don't know. It's a good time. <laughs> and um, there's actually a really fun, I got a photo from that night. You, I, I just have to show you this and get your reaction. This is the weirdest fucking photo. Um, because it's like, yeah, come on, we'll take a selfie. And I had like one of those shitty phones. Um, uh, it's very Googleable. Uh, it's where is the f this is yeah this is the first pic. So this was that night. So this is in that dressing room, and I think I'm like 18 years old. Holy shit! It's so weird. I gotta get that. I, I gotta put that yeah yeah, yeah. Just, just literally Google it. Um, oh, and this is uh, this is uh, Steve Duda. That's when we started our band thing. Oh, right on. Yeah, he's a cool dude. We'll put that up. Too. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, so I'm out there, like, just hanging out with this fucking rock star thinking, you know, like, okay, but they, you know what? It's cool. It's an experience. Cool. And I, and I watched the show. I enjoyed it. And then, um, and then he's like... Uh, well, what are you doing this week? And I'm like, what do you mean, what am I doing this week? Like, I'm going back to my fucking normal ass fucking life and figuring out more music shit, you know? It's like, well, we, you should come come to Montreal. And so he's like, I'm like, well, I, I don't drive. First of all, I had to get dropped off here and I, and I got to fucking, I don't know, I got to figure out actually how I'm getting home. Actually, you know what? As a matter of fact, I think I had to borrow 50 bucks from, I had to ask him. I, I did. I said, dude, I don't want to be that guy, but can I borrow 50 bucks so I can get the fucking go train back to Niagara Falls? Because it's like 45 minutes away. It's going to be like hundreds of dollars for a cab, but I can wait till morning and then get on the go train and go back. And he's like, yeah, sure, dude. But why don't you come to Montreal? I'm like, well, because I, I can't afford a flight to Montreal if I can't afford a fucking train ride home. And he's like, no, just fucking come on the bus, fucking idiot. And I was like, all right. So I got on the bus with him, his tour bus, and then we drove up there. And, of course, it was all night just chatting about dumb shit. Nothing music, nothing, no business, no no nothing. And I was like, okay, the guy's actually kind of fun to hang out with. He's like a fucking kid. He's a really cool dude. So I ended up like staying with him for like a week. So we do Montreal, do Quebec, well, <laughs> Canada. And he's like, I gotta go back to the States later, dude. And I'm like, okay, drop me off at fucking home. You know? <laughs> and actually funniest story. My mother was like this. I, I, so I lived off the highway Pretty much, like, so once the highway kind of ends, you go left or right or straight, right? Straight goes into, like, a tiny suburb. Left or right goes down this mean streak on Montrose Road in Niagara Falls. And um, we lived in, like, a little bungalow thing in that subdivision. So 
Tommy had to come back through Niagara Falls to go over to the U.S. border to go to Buffalo, right? And I was like, dude, perfect. Can you drop me off? Like, just literally, like, just at, uh, just exit the highway, fucking, and then just drop me off, and I'm good. And he's like, oh, yeah, easy, because we got to take the QEW to go to the fucking Rainbow Bridge anyway. And I'm like, oh, this works out perfectly. Thank you. So um, I stayed on tour. We went to a few shows, and um, uh, he drops me off. And my fucking mom sees this Motley Crue tour bus fucking pull up literally out front of the fucking house because right off the fucking highway. Okay, later, dude. Okay, bye. Getting in the house. Mom was like... Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.